There we Back go. On. Back on. Welcome, everyone. You guys just witnessed Sean Lang playing one of his uh, own creations uh, from a band that he likes to call once. Well, this is your own stuff, Seven Year Storm. Seven Year Storm. Beautiful. What was that song called, by the way? Uh, it's called Totish Darkness. Crazy. It's a Stephen King reference. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Welcome, everyone, to a live lesson. It's a Monday lesson. There's a lot of people here today. Sweet. And um, <laughs> so no pressure or anything, Sean. But uh, it's going to be a good lesson. Today we're talking about how to develop speed around the drum set, something that everyone needs to practice all the time because, like Sean says in the actual sheet music here, in fact, it was actually a pretty good quote, uh, you said, speed is all about being prepared to play any combination you can think of spur of the moment. And I don't know if you guys were watching before the lesson, Sean, you were doing just, hey, you had a click track going and you're just doing some basic hand to feet combinations all around yep. the kit. Just trying to trip myself up, and it wasn't very hard. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot of fun, and I can I can totally. tell like the value of that of that yeah. kind of practice. It's crazy. So if y'all if y'all don't know Sean, he's one of our instructors on Drumio. He uh, does some of the live lessons with us daily. He also is involved with the Bass Drum Secrets. Um, you play Axis pedals. What mm -hmm. else? Uh, you play um, uh, Casey drums. I play Casey drums. This isn't my kit, but it's uh, it sounds just as nice actually. And uh, I play Lost Cables drumsticks. Beautiful. <laughs> and you also play for the band First Rain. I do. Excellent. So guys, that being said, uh, we are going to give away some free stuff today as well. And to do that, go to facebook.com forward slash Drumeo, like the page. If you haven't already, like us, please. And we're going to be asking a very basic question today. Because it's developing speed, I want to know what song you guys practice to work on your speed. I know when I was practicing a lot, uh, back back in the day, I used to practice a lot of no effects. There was a song specifically called The Decline I used to practice. It's great for developing speed. Double bass. Dragon Force, anything like that. What about you? Any any kind of speed songs that you practice? There, there's a song uh, by Decapitated that uh, I've usually used to kind of uh, practice my more mid-tempo double bass because it, it's a completely different muscle group. And that song is called Spheres of Madness. A lot of people are probably already familiar with that. It's a pretty pretty classic death metal tune. Cool. Um, it always tends to be metal for me. If I'm practicing speed, it's, you know, I'm just going to be playing metal. But um, yeah. And then for faster stuff... A uh, couple, couple good tracks on uh, the latest Faceless album. That was pretty good for that. Awesome. Yeah. So I would love to hear what you guys practice to develop speed. I'm sure there's a couple songs. And if you don't, maybe just put some songs down into that you practice to on a regular basis. Post that on our wall, facebook.com slash drumio. And during the lesson, I'm going to pick some random people. We're going to give away a pair of drumsticks. We're going to give away a drumio t-shirt. And we're going to give away two month-long trials for Drumio, uh, which is awesome. because That's we get, huge. Yeah, it's, it's pretty big. You get lessons every single day from instructors like Sean, me, Jared, this bunch of others in there as well, and uh, it's just a ton of fun. Members who are watching right now, make sure you get your questions in right away. Monday lessons are always so full and busy that we rarely get a chance to get through all of them. Um, download the sheet music as well. That being said, Sean, take it away. Yeah, so developing speed around the kit. This is just one way of many, and this, this is actually pretty... Uh, it's, it's almost in, in blocks of either eighth notes or, or, or 16th notes. So this is just one way of many, and this even this won't, won't cover all the bases, but it definitely gets you started. So we've got four patterns. Um, first one is, uh, well actually first off, there's two groupings for each pattern. There's the top and the bottom, or one and two. So one, um, to start off with, we play it on the toms, and two, we play it on the snare. And we'll kind of play around with that and swap that up, but that's just to kind of give us a basis of two separate groups that we're playing with to try to cover all of the bases um, for different things to hit. Um, and that's really what, what's going to help you to kind of increase your speed on the kit is to getting, just basically getting used to um, hitting lots of different things in different places that maybe you wouldn't normally do. But every now and then, like everyone's probably had this, you're playing a song and this awesome feel comes into your head and you try to do it and you just totally bomb because you've never done it before and you've never ever maybe tried to cross over or you've never tried to reach this really really high crash who put that up there yeah this really high crash and then also come over you know with a little splash over here or something so it's, it's all about kind of preparing your body to to do different motions and also to do them up to speed with everything else um so well i noticed already like i'm looking at the sheet music here and it's notated on the two toms the top tom and the bottom tom when you got the one and two there so obviously you're not just playing those on these two no see it, if you look at the the first exercise there and then over top of that, we've got eight different variations which you're going to play with. So we have, it says one on toms and two on snare. So if you look at that exercise, the top row is going to be the tom and the bottom row is going to be the snare. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just one tom, it's going to be all the toms. So we'll start simple and then we'll start mixing it up a little bit and then, um, yeah, start from there. Perfect. Really, really 
simple, but we all start somewhere. So some of you, you're probably going to be way beyond this. You're like, this is boring. That's fine, because it's going to get more complicated as we go on. So now we'll start mixing up the toms a little bit. Did I get it? Almost. So for me, this is the first exercise, but for me, the most difficult part is going from the tom and back over and not having my sticks click. I got lucky that time, um, but that's something that I would definitely practice. I would probably just sit down, and it, it might seem a little bit mundane, but you will get a lot better very, very quickly, so it's like this. <laughs> it's a kick and splash flam. It's pretty high level. Yeah, pretty advanced. Yeah. So, uh, and and as as you kind of noticed, as I went up to speed and got faster and faster, I got out of my comfort zone, started getting really really messy. And so that's probably where I would practice most of the time for for that one, which is why I took it into a groove at that at about that tempo, and I just tried to throw it in and uh, get it to a point where I wasn't really choking myself up. Because if I try to do that. And it's going to sound really great in the song, but I totally bail. The entire band's going to look at me, or maybe they're going to stop, or they're going to screw up. And mm -hmm. That's not good. Mm -hmm. So let me cast my breath, two seconds, sure. and we'll move on. Um, the next variation of this is going to be toms and cymbals, just to kind of throw it around a little bit. Because um, when, we're, when, we're uh, when we're trying to get around the kit, and we're trying to do it fast, it's not always just going to be toms. Sometimes it's going to be cymbals and drums, sometimes um, it's just going to be cymbals even, and so it's really good to get used to throwing around between the cymbals and the toms so that you don't just have these really one-dimensional fills like this. If you throw in a little bit of cymbal in there, it spices it up quite sure a lot, does. right? <laughs> so uh, we'll just experiment if, with a few of uh, a few cymbals in this uh, beat here. Man, I'm so out of breath right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a toddler. Kind of sounds like a toddler on the drums, but it actually really increases your dexterity around the kit. Well, I was actually going to say, and most of the times when I'm hitting the crashes, I'm, I'm usually kicking. But this is an exercise just on developing your speed and stuff, right? Your so, speed and your uh, movement around yeah. the kit. Uh, what I think I was going to say is, there's no kind of rhyme to reason of what you're doing. You're just kind of improving and choosing um, the symbols and toms to hit. Is it better to do that, or maybe in your mind should you set up a pattern? I'm going to hit. Hi hats first, Tom second. Like, what would you suggest for something like that? That that's a good point. Um, yeah, what I'm doing is I'm just completely improving and going around the kit, and it kind of goes both ways because if you develop kind of a routine and you hit everything, well, you get really good at that routine, but you might not really get that great at thinking outside the box because you're only used to hitting the splash after it comes after the high tom mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So I I'm more of the uh, kind of abstract field of thought. Just just go for it, and as long as you're splitting it up kind of like the exercise states, you're going to be doing good. Even if, you, even if you've got a routine, it's going to be good, but you're going to kind of get used to, you know, it's going to be like a beat rather than, that, rather than an actual exercise. Cool. That's my take on that. Cool. So the third variation is toms and snare on, the, uh, on part one of the beat and bass drum on part two. Remember part one and part two. So 
it's going to be like this. I'm playing it with a. Is it on? Yeah, yeah I can't tell. I can't tell. <laughs> I'm playing it with a with a double pedal because it's habit. Now we'll do it with a single pedal. Perfect. Also gives your foot a workout too. Totally. So it's great. And you can even do that with your left foot too once you're, uh, if you really want to challenge yourself, I guess, eh? I didn't That's mean good. to put you on the spot, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, I had to challenge myself. Yeah, for sure. I just, just to get, let everybody know, this is just exercise number one. We're going through all the different variations, which are the bullet points on the sheet. Yeah. Uh, just in case you weren't sure where we were. Yeah. Um, so, now on the fourth variation, we're just going to bring in the cymbals. So it's going to be tom, snare, and cymbals on the first part and the still kick on the second part. So here we go. And actually this is this is where I start to draw a lot of my fills from when I'm playing uh, in first rain or any, any sort of the metal stuff. I like to really mix up, you know, add a splash or a, a ride bell in the middle of a tom and a, or in the middle of a hand and foot combination. It sounds pretty cool. So. It's pretty hectic, pretty fast, but it's a lot of fun. You can yeah. hold on for a while. It's good. Cool. So, fifth variation. Uh, this is going to be, again, part one. We're going to be improving around the full kit. So just snare, toms, cymbals. Uh, actually, sorry, not cymbals. That's wrong. It's going to be snare and toms. And then part two is going to be kicks and cymbals in unison. So this is where it gets pretty fun because whenever... You're hitting a symbol, and it's going to be two two symbols, so it's going to be symbol, 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 symbol. You're also going to be hitting the kick, so it brings in a new element of coordination. It can, it can feel really, really like you're almost being pulled around by the beat. It's kind of fun. See that one giving you the most, some of the most oh. workout because your hands are constantly doing this moving all the time, and it's... you want to, you always want to speed up. But the thing is, you got to remember, you got to hit those symbols at the same time. And, and you were probably watching me. I was getting into a groove like sweet, and I got overconfident, and then I changed something up, yeah. And then I lost it, which means this is a really good exercise because I'm finding things that make me uncomfortable, which means I should practice those. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing exercises like this, there's actually two things to watch out for. Um, these are both good things. Um, one, if something gives you trouble, um, you should probably practice it more. So it's, it's kind of a magnifying glass into your playing because you're like, wow, if, if I get good at this, I can make some really cool sounding beats or some really cool sounding fills or grooves or whatever. And another thing is just throwing random stuff around the kit, you'll actually find some combinations that you might really like. And if, you, if it's something that you really like, just kind of 
uh, really groove on that for a while. Make it make it uh, when your fills kind of pulled into your repertoire. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to kind of almost stumble upon. Uh, it's like looking under rocks and finding extra stuff. You know, it's like oh, I didn't know that was there. I'm gonna keep that. You know, totally. So it's pretty cool. Totally. Um, variation six is just gonna be the same thing but flipped around. So kicks first and uh, everything else full kit afterwards, or kit, sorry, kicks and cymbals and full kit afterwards. This we don't really need to do. Um, it only really will make a difference in the context of music because the kick's gonna be coming first and then the cymbals are gonna be coming second. So we could probably just blaze over that one and go to variation number seven. One thing I would say about the last one you just you just talked about, when you're practicing that, like a lot of these exercises that you're practicing, you're not using a click to it. No. You're kind of just doing it at your own tempo. Um, and that's, this is probably a great question uh, in general too, is where do you kind of start? Do you want to start slow and speed it up? Do you want to practice with a click? Because I know with a uh, number six and, or uh, sorry, a variation number six and seven, or sorry, five and six, they're so similar that without a click, they wouldn't really matter, right? Yeah, exactly. It, it's all, it all depends on context and you should be practicing these things with a click. Um, for time constraints, we're not gonna bother switching between slow and fast and slow and fast. But it, it's actually gonna do you a lot of good practicing it first comfortably, getting used to throwing it around, and then maybe upping the speed a little bit and getting used to throwing that around, even playing it slowly. There's, there's almost three levels of playing. Um, your comfort zone, which is, it, it's great to play in your comfort zone, but playing slower than your comfort zone, it's a whole other ball game. It's like being really, really uncomfortable. It's like you haven't eaten a meal all day. And then speeding it up as well. So you should you should play around with, with with your tempos for sure because building speed is one thing, but then also making it solid. You're not always going to be playing really really fast. Um, believe it or not, most people don't want to hire the death metal drummer. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, that being said, yeah, um, number seven. Sure. So basically, variation seven is just going to draw on all the other variations. We're we're basically going to throw in a kick and a crash on one and three. So one. Um, so I'll show you how that looks. We'll do it with um, uh, the we'll mix that with the first variation. So one on toms and two and snare, and we'll do the kicks and crash on one and three, just to make things really confusing with the sure. drivers. Slow tempo. That was slow. So we're <laughs> another that came There we go. So that was on kick on one and three, or kick and kick and crash on one and three. Kick and crash on, on one and three, exactly. Um, and there, there's gonna be a lot of times where in a fill you might want to accent a musical part that maybe the bass player is doing or keyboards or something like that. And it's great to kind of throw a crash in there. But you have to be able to uh, you have to know what that's gonna sound like and throw it in there and be prepared before you do it, otherwise it just might sound like a total train wreck. Mm -hmm. So again, this is all about musical preparation. So the next one is going to be uh, kick and crash on two and four. Um, so we'll try that. That was just me exploring the tempo and kind of throwing it around. So for the last two, are you you just basically choosing one of the other variations and then throwing in a kick and, and uh, or crash on one and two or three and four? Exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. And this starts to sound a little bit more, more interesting when we get to uh, the other exercises here. Cool. So that's a really good example. Uh, again, those were all just on numbers number one. We went through all eight variations of number one. Now, before, actually, before we get into the numbers two, three, and four, because that's when it gets really challenging adding in 68 notes, and uh, we could even, you can even do triplets and stuff in here. You can, 
You can have a lot of fun. You can have a ton of fun yeah. with this. But before we continue, I just want to give away a couple things. Um, so that being said, guys, go to facebook.com forward slash drumio. And I just want to know what kind of music do you guys practice to to develop speed? And I said before, I do a lot of no effects. Actually, I did a lot of Blink. Blink is a great, uh, great band for Great for the right hand. Great for the right hand. And then if you really want to challenge yourself, play it open style. Um, but uh, I got a few, I got quite a few um, um, people already. So, and I like how what Jared does. Jared chooses a, a couple letters and he asks you to choose one of these letters. And that's the, the, the name that I'm going to choose. So, we've got D, M, and R. M. M. Mike Pinaveria. Mike Pinaveria likes to play along with Tool, lateral, or Lateralis. My preference, but any song will do. You, you play a lot of Tool. I haven't played it for a while, but actually the other day I was at the gym and I was listening to Tool, Lateralis, and I'm like, where has this album been for the last five years of my life? Because I, I listened to it like yeah. nonstop every day in high school, and then I just kind of put it on the shelf. Totally. Such a good album. I love Two that letter, album. It's, a, it's great. It's a classic album. Danny Carey's um, a monster of a player. Yeah, totally. So, Mike, Mike Penever, uh, Penaveria, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but email me, davidrumio.com. You have got a pair of drumsticks, and uh, I will send them to you right away. Next, I'm going to give away a shirt, just a drum shirt, black like this. It is short sleeve. Um, okay, so I've got, let me try another one here. Okay, I've got L, I've got N, and I've got C. Let's do L for Lang. L for Lang. Okay, Lee Morris. Just getting back into drumming after 15 years of time off. Working on City on a Hill by Casting Crowns. The website has a greatly... This website has greatly improved my drumming. Awesome, Lee. Lee Morris, you want a Drumio shirt? Just email me, davidrumio.com, with your size and your address, and I will get one shipped to you. Um, and we have some Drumio memberships that we're going to give away at the end, so guys, do not go away, and uh, let's get back into it. Now let's go through numbers two, three, and four. Two, three, and four. All right. So, um, it might be a good idea since there's a lot to get through here. Um, we'll we'll try different variations on different exercises, but we might not do every single one. So yeah, let's try exercise two, and we'll just start with the first variation. So actually, before I'll, I'll break it down. So we we have a group of sixteenth notes and then a group of eighths, a group of sixteenths and a group of eighths. The sixteenths are all on part number one. The eighths are all on part number two. You know, they're they're segmented just as we discussed before. So. First variation is uh, part number one will be toms and part number two will be the snare. Fun little one. You're doing little bursts of speed everywhere, and I was actually trying to do some cross sticks just to, or not some cross sticks, some uh, crossover. Crossover. I was actually going to mention that, yeah. Just, to, that just to throw myself off, yeah. and uh, I did. Nice. nice. <laughs> so um, next one will be uh, one on toms and cymbals, two on the snare. Actually, you know what? We'll skip over that. We will do one on toms and snare, two on bass drum. Again, you're playing that with double bass. Ah, now we'll do single. Force of habit. Yeah, fair enough. I just thought I'd bring it up. I noticed that it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is okay. good to practice with one as well. Absolutely. So let's try uh, exercise two. We'll do with variation four as well. So one on the tom, snare, and the cymbals, two on the bass drum.
really have a lot of fun with the groups of four. Uh, one of my favorite patterns comes out of it, and it's basically uh, either an accent on the first right and then left right, and then an accent on the left, or instead of an accent, just another drum. So you get this kind of uh, almost a triplet feel. It's almost like you're going uh, triplet, 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 you're going triplet, and then you're pulling another triplet. So it's like this. Show us some uh, some cool fill ideas you can do. Beat and fills like, using that kind of uh, those triplet not triplets but the six beat note groupings of four. Yeah, yeah. Some fill ideas. Well, I'm gonna play a beat and I'm just gonna throw that into a fill. Perfect. Not necessarily like this exercise, but we'll just throw that little group of four in. Sure. All stuff that you obviously need to work up to get to that speed, I guess. Yeah. Cool. It's all about comfort zone and yeah. So let's see. Number two, and we will do uh, on the full kit with two on the bass drums and the cymbals in unison. So this one's fun. I love that uh, Fred says, you can't decide whether his speed is demoralizing or motivating. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. you got to work your way up to that speed, and these exercises are great great for that. So Speed, it's, it's, it can be impressive, but once you start getting there, you realize there's not really a whole lot to it except for just muscle memory and repetition. So mm -hmm. it should be motivating. It's not really, yeah. You set goals for yourself, too. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like training. You're not going to get big muscles unless you lift the heavy weights. You're not going to get fast unless you start practicing and, and going up. So, mm -hmm. Cool. Let's do number yeah. three. I want to see some uh, some number twos on the bass drum. Yeah. That's what I want to see. This is where it gets fun. Um, so number three, um, for all of the variations on the bass drum, either you've got a godly right or left foot or you're going to want to double pedal. Mm -hmm. So we can do the really slow speeds with a single pedal, but I think we'll just skip over that and we'll just do a little bit faster with the double pedal. Cool. It's also a great way, actually, to practice the consistency and the, and the uh, balance of your double pedal because you're just doing it in bursts of four. So if you're a new double bass player, this is actually a great exercise for you and it will actually totally increase your your coordination around the kit and your hand to feet combos, so do it. Awesome, which one is this? Number three with what variation? We will do, what to choose, what to choose, what to choose. Can we do one on tom and snare, two on bass? We'll keep it simple and do that. Beautiful. Yes. That's variation three, by the way.
Cool. So that's a fun one. And um, as you can see, I started out with an exercise and then I realized I almost said I'd stumbled upon a little bit of a groove. So I started grooving on that for a while mm -hmm. at the same time, working out both my feet and uh, had a new groove to add to my arsenal. Perfect. Quick question. I just saw this one in the, in the, in the chat or in the uh, questions here. So I thought I'd ask it. Mm -hmm. Is the kick trigger today? This is from Viking. No triggers. This thing's clean. Beautiful. Not that it was dirty, but... No, no. <laughs> but uh, I just thought I'd get that out of the way. Um, let's continue. Sweet. Triggers always come up. Yeah. We will do beat three or exercise three, and we will do it on... Um, we'll do variation four as well because the symbols spice things up a bit. Beautiful. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so we have about uh, close to 20 minutes left. I still have some stuff to give away. we got to go through number four, and I would love to you to do another play along if that's possible. Sure. So can we uh, maybe just jump on to number four? Number four. Um, this is the, the metal exercise, pretty much. Yeah. This one's fun. Um, yeah, we'll do a couple variations of number four, starting with just the first variation. We'll keep it basic. So it's all 16th notes. That's why it's the metal one. Not too far or not too hard to uh, stray off and get mixed up, which is why it's a great exercise. Um, we'll get to the uh, the one that everyone wants to hear, which is variation three. Um, part one on Tom's and snare, part two on the bass drum, and this is also kind of a staple uh, death metal sort of fill, where it's basically just like pure aggression. It's hands, feet, hands, feet. Uh, I'll show you. Barrage of 16th yeah. notes. Crazy. Cool. So you can basically, guys, take these exercises with you, and this should be something in your in your arsenal of practice uh, exercises now. I would say so. And uh, just practice with any one of those variations on any one of those exercises. Compile them. We, Me and Sean were actually talking for the lesson because he wanted to talk about putting different sticking patterns over top of that and going into triplet variations, which you can easily do. But if we have time at the end, we'll kind of discuss that. But I want to show um, what kind of speed you guys, you can get, sorry, you guys, you can get with one of your play-alongs. Um, you have one loaded up, ready to go? I don't, but we can load that up. Load wanna... that up. While you're doing that, um, I'll just ask another quick question from you. And uh, this is a question really quickly from Captain Kickars. Actually, this is from Anne Lott, but Captain Kickars asks, asks it. Uh, it says, what is a good double pedal for a beginner? What would you suggest is the best double pedal for a beginner drummer? Um, you don't need any bells and whistles. You definitely don't need an axis pedal or, or anything too high end from any uh, pedal maker. So most pedal makers will have something within the two to two hundred fifty dollar price range, and some of them will even have a double chain and a solid footboard, or not the actual footboard, but the uh, the floor plate. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. Don't don't cheap out and go for thirty dollars less and get the one with the wire uh, foot or floor plate and the single chain. So a, a good one would be. Um, I would say the DW3000, but it's actually kind of clunky. Um, it's a well-made pedal, but it's sort of slow. Um, there is a, what's it called? Uh, the model number is, it, it, it's a Mapex actually, and it's, a, it's like a 710, and it's a double pedal, and it's like 220, I think, 220, 230, um, Canadian, might be cheaper in the States, 
double chain, solid floor plate, um, plays really nice for the money. Beautiful. Yeah, so. Cool. All right, let's hear what song is this one called? Well, if we're going for speed, we're going to do a first rain song. All right. And this one, uh, the Drumeo guys would have heard this a few times now. This is going to be Severed Inception. And actually, I don't know if I have the play on. Do I have the play on here? I don't. Um, they might have to queue it up. Oh, we might not have time for that. If we don't have time for that, then yeah. we'll pick Just something else. do one of your... Uh... Or I, I'll, I'll play along to the, the song with... Um... Hold on a sec here. We got uh, three month-long trials for Drumeo that I'm going to be giving away three month subscriptions. So you guys, make sure you get your uh, um, posts in facebook.com slash Drumeo like us as well. Um, you, got, you got it coming? We'll, we'll go with, uh, with a seven-year storm. It won't be as fast, unfortunately. Sure, but, that's okay. Uh, your fills are uh, very cool anyway, so it'll be a lot of fun to watch. All right, here we go. Here we go. Technical difficulties, everyone. It's only one channel. You hear that? Yeah. We're only getting it from one ear. That's why. There we go. Oh, oh. almost. See it after here. Finicky wires. You think? Just bear with us. You think with all the cameras we have, ah, we'd be able to buy a nice um, cable? Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I wouldn't touch it, man. <laughs> I would just leave it. <laughs>
Thank you. Yeah, when is that album coming up, by the way? I don't know. We're going to be tracking it sometime this summer, so I would say probably early fall. That's awesome. I'm looking Hopefully. forward to it. That's all your stuff. You wrote everything from that, right? I wrote it all, and then I handed it to a guitarist, and then they whine about why. Why is it so hard? <laughs> why is it so hard? Yes. And why is this written like a drummer wrote it? Yeah. <laughs> why is this exactly? <laughs> uh, cool. So let me just um, uh, continue where we left off, and uh, before we get into the last giveaways, let's do some questions. Is that all right with you? Sure. Cool. Uh, now, usually we get a chance to get through all the questions on a live lesson, but because Monday ones are so busy and so full of uh, um, uh, play logs and giveaways and stuff, we only have a time for a few, so I definitely apologize. Very quickly, though, Greg Patterson wants to know, what heads do you recommend? Which Evans heads do you recommend for metal? For metal? Um, for Evans heads, uh, I would say either the regular G2 clears that are on here. Clears tend to be brighter, which you want in metal when everyone's going full tilt, so they'll, they'll stand out a little bit more and give you that metal sound. Or if you want a little bit of a duller tone, not necessarily duller, but just um, not as much overtone and not as much guesswork in the tuning, um, then I would go with the EC2. They're a little bit more expensive, but there's a little ring that kills the overtones, makes them easier to tune. They also, they don't have as much resonance, which is sometimes also good for metal because you don't want a drum that's singing out while you're doing a big long uh, fill or something like that. Cool. Charles Gleason quickly asks, Hey, I noticed uh, before the lesson you're doing some double strokes. Any advice on how you can speed up uh, double strokes? I struggle with them. Actually, before you get into that, um, we'll leave that one because on Wednesday, if you come out on Wednesday, Charles, we're doing a whole lesson on how to develop your double stroke roll speed. Um, so definitely come out for that one. It's an intermediate lesson, but it's going to be a ton of stuff in there That'll for you. Good. Uh, Chris says, hey, Sean, I noticed you hold your sticks pretty far back, almost at the end. Does that help you with your balance when you're uh, uh, using to reach double pedals? You know what? Um, my my uh, kit setup, this actually, I didn't really set this kit up, so this isn't my normal setup, but I like to have the bass drum farther away, which usually means me sitting farther back. And so I've always gravitated towards longer sticks. Like these are the Los Cabos um, 5A Intense, so it's basically half an inch longer than a regular 5A. So I'm already going for a longer stick, and then I always tend to hold the sticks far back. Um, and that's, that's mainly just, just for metal when I'm really trying to get around the kit. The extra length comes in handy. It might tire me out a little bit more because I'm pushing more weight around, whereas the average drummer is going to hold their sticks more, more like that. If I'm grooving, chances are that's how I'm holding my sticks, but if it gets intense, they start to uh, slide back, and that's, yeah, it's mainly just help me get around the kit because I don't like to be reaching around. Um, on my own kit setup, I have everything really close, so I just like to basically, this is all, this pivot is the only moves. way I want to move. Yeah, it's just right? like a pivot. Exactly. Yeah. I don't even want to, I, I just want my, basically, wrists to do the work, that's why some, actually, there's been a huge influx of uh, YouTubers lately commenting on how I look like a robot when I play, because there's no emotion, and I'm just like, but that, that's the way I like it. I, I get, I, uh, I In the know. drum yard community, we call you a machine, machine, not a robot. You're a machine. I have no feelings. <laughs> yeah, no feelings. So don't, yeah. <laughs> Captain Bob says, is it wise to play faster and faster until you feel the burn without, um, uh, without losing control of your hands, or until you reach your controlled speed? Your control speed is going to stay the same unless you feel the burn. The burn is, is you're, you're straining your muscles, and uh, um, that's also the feeling of progress. If you've got a good burn on the next day, that's good. It's kind of like going to the gym. Again, another, another uh, exercise reference. But if you're feeling that burn, that's new uh, muscle tissue being ripped, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's going to grow. So you definitely want to feel the burn. And even if it gets really, really sloppy with whatever you're doing in speed, um, slow it down a little bit. But... Keep, keep that burn there. That's, that's good. That's progress. Excellent. In my experience, anyway. If, if it's like something really, really bad and like, you know, your leg starts bleeding or bruising or something, well, then, then stop. And then stop, exactly. We're not doctors here, guys. Don't take our medical <laughs> advice. Just drummers. <laughs> yeah. Captain Kickar says, when you are hitting several drums and cymbals, what are you thinking in your head? When I speed up, I lose balance or count, etc. That's, that's a weird thing. See, I'm, I don't really think when I play anymore. Um, I just... You're a machine, just, man. You I just, think. I just feel, man. <laughs> no, yeah, no. I, it's a, uh, it's not really a thought process as much as, as I'm just trying to convey a feel. And the minute I start thinking about what I'm playing, I lose it. So it, it's all about, um, adding things to your repertoire, things that you're comfortable with that will just sort of come out. Like, when we're talking, we're not necessarily thinking, okay, next word I'm going to use is what, and then I'm going to use is. And then your and then your and then name. Like when you say what is your name, you don't plan out every single word. You just say it. It's it just comes out. So it's going to be the same thing with drumming. If if you're thinking about everything everything that you're playing, um, you're probably going to lose it because you're thinking too hard. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where practice comes in, and that's where actually these exercises come in. As as you kind of 
get used to throwing stuff all over the kit, it becomes ingrained in you. It becomes muscle memory. Um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Shane says, should the snare and the floor tom be the same height to be able to move between them quicker? Very good question. I've always uh, uh, preferred that. Yeah. yeah. For, for sure. Um, if, it, if a floor tom's too high, uh, for me anyway, I usually end up hitting the rim. Some guys like to have their floor tom as high as their toms. I, I think that's more of an old schooler sort of thing where you have everything on the level. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I like to have it nice and low so I can just do crossovers. And uh, again, it's this whole keep everything right here. I don't want to have to drive around too much. Awesome. Michael Donald said, hey, Dave and uh, Sean, can you please let us know what the number one and two mean on the left side of the sheet music? Thanks. So I guess he's talking about all the little ones and twos behind each one. If you want to yeah, quickly go that, over that. that's what we we're talking about. Like, if you look at the different variations, uh, top variation says one on toms, two on snare. So it's basically just saying that in exercise one, the top line, line number one, is going to be played only on the toms. You're not going to touch the snare or the kick or anything, just the toms. And then line number two, the bottom one, is going to be on the snare. Make sense? Mm -hmm. It's a really, a really efficient way of making... 100 exercises, 1,000 exercises almost, just using yeah. four, four uh, sh um, stats or four bars, right? Uh, Bobby Davis says, is there anything that you can do to work on when you're not around the kit or a pad that will help you with your playing and speed? Uh, everything is a drum. <laughs> you can... <laughs> totally. Like, you can, you can go for days. So you just make sure that you're not next to someone who's going to hate you for it and throw stuff at you. But pads are good. Um, pillows are better. They're going to build up your muscles. Um, the floor works for coordination. For If you're practicing speed, the floor isn't going to be as good, but for coordination, I can still practice you know, coordinated beats and syncopation and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I remember being in high school uh, during class practicing polyrhythms. People got so mad at me. What are you <laughs> doing? But uh, it's always I, a time and place to practice. I actually drum on my teeth in my mouth. Really? Like, I'll be walking around, and I'll actually be grooving, and no one knows, and doesn't piss anybody off. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and I'm not the only one. I was actually on Reddit the other day, and there was an entire thread on, on mouth drummers, so. Have you seen those shirts that actually have the drum sets on them, and people tap them, and they got a little speaker? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can always buy one of those shirts. I can't remember who was that. Was that, um, I think that was Bob, Bob Davis. Anyway, you can always buy one of those shirts, too, and take it wherever you go. Uh, okay, so... Michael, Michael Donald said, never seen this type of music reading before with the instructions on top of the page and the sheet music at the bottom. Am I missing something? We kind of just explained it too. It's just another way of getting uh, thousands of ideas in all on four It's just, bars. just efficiency because yeah. the, these are such simple exercises when you get down to it that there's no reason to take up uh, 10 pages writing it out. Yeah. He also says, Sean, is an animal on the drums in the best kind of way. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Jeff Wheeler, this is a great question too. Is there any benefit to using heavier sticks for practicing uh, than I would usually do for uh, performance? Uh, yeah, I think think there's a lot to be said about that. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of guys, I, I would recommend using heavier sticks maybe on a pad. On your whole kit, you might end up doing damage. Like there are some pretty thick sticks you can get that really work your, your wrists and that's a really great thing to do. Um, if your body gets used to doing more work, then when it actually comes time to, uh, when it comes time to perform, and there's not as much weight there and you don't have to do as much work, you're probably going to play better. Just don't, don't make it such a drastic change that you're totally out of your element. Like, I, I like the 5As, and if I were to go from playing this to playing a 7A, that would be too light for me, and I would probably, um, my playing would probably suffer because of it. So you want to pick something that's not going to throw you off completely, but something that is going to work you a little bit better, which is why I suggest if you're practicing hand technique or rudiments, use a heavier stick, but when you're actually even practicing on your kit at home, just use regular sticks. Excellent. Beamer says, would you recommend exercise four for the single pedal at slower speeds? Single pedal, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, if, yeah. if you're, um, actually with, with something like swivel, for example, or heel toe, if you can get that kind of constant motion thing with heel toe, you could do a good, like, I've been, um, Today I was practicing swivel, so I could actually probably do this with with the swivel technique if I'm... Yeah, sure. Maybe I can actually do it today. So that wouldn't be too tough with, uh, like, with like the swivel technique, for example. That, 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 swivel, swivel, that, 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 that. Now, would you recommend, because for something like this, you'd maybe uh, be going way too slow for your hands to get any work on. Maybe just do it with one hand. Yeah, that's the thing, is... Um, 
if you if you have it too slow, you might be working out your feet and it becomes a pedal exercise, but then the actual point of this is completely lost. So two separate exercises might be a better way to go. Cool. Okay, we've got three minutes left. Let's give away some stuff. And uh, again, the question that I asked on Facebook was basically, what kind of music do you listen to to practice your speed? What kind of songs do you practice along with? Um, let me just pull up my Facebook right here. Okay. This one, I, I'm going to choose a random one quickly. Nick Savard. I try to practice Painkiller by Judas Priest to improve with leg strength and nice. endurance. Very cool. Nick Savard, email me, davidromeo.com. You got yourself a free month of Dromeo. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations is definitely in order. Okay. Does he have access to the archives as well? He does. Yes. Sweet. So you've already got um, a month's, two uh -huh. months worth of lessons. It's lesson 79 tonight, I think. This is like lesson 79. So that's 79 hours of lessons in the archives that you guys can go through. The, this whole drumming thing is, is, is awesome because I actually go to the archives and watch the other teachers and practice what they teach. It's it's great. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun. I know. I sit here and then when I'm done the lesson, I go back home and I'm like, okay, what was he talking about? I'm going to practice that. So cool. Um, I'm going to pronounce this name wrong. I know it, but uh, Noe, Noe Luna says practicing a rising thunder of angra power metal all the way very cool if they get pretty fast that would be be a, be a burner for sure yeah no yeah. kidding um noe luna email me at dave at dromeo.com and i'll set you up last but definitely not least in fact i'm going to refresh my browser just so i get all the new ones in here okay All right, here we go. Hopefully, I'm not picking people who are already members. I have no idea. So um, here we go. I'm going to choose Maiko Tiger Hasiao. I am brutal at this, but um, <laughs> M-E-I-C-O Tiger H-S-I-A-O. You have won. He listens to the Fox Hunt. It's a really fast swing, and it really boosts your speed around the kit. Sweet. Very cool. I'm going to have to look, look into that. Email me, davidromeo.com. You got yourself a free month of uh, Drumeo. And again, that's like, what, 79 hours of lessons already. Plus, <laughs> the whole month that you're going to have, that's an extra 20-some-odd lessons, another 20 hours. So. You pretty much have thousands of hours of practicing that you already have to make up. So. Yeah, yeah. It, but I can save that. Don't be overwhelmed. I know a lot of people <laughs> say, oh, there's too many, too many lessons, but they're all organized in a really well way. It's a, it's a good problem to have. Yeah, it's a good problem to have yeah, if you call that a problem. And um, that being said, Sean, thank you so much for coming out. No problem. It's a lot of fun. I always enjoy your play-alongs, and uh, you're such a crazy drummer. Um, so, guys, thanks for joining us all. Sean, we'll be here again for actually another Monday lesson, I believe, in two weeks from now, and it's on the flat foot technique, or basically your technique on, on, on the bass drum, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you want to learn how Sean gets crazy speeds, definitely come up for that one. That's not going to be this Monday, but the following Monday. So I'll see you guys all out there. Everybody in the drumming, Drumio community, I'll see you all tomorrow. We have Jason Cleaver coming in talking about essential drum gear. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Any last words? Uh, I just came up with a great name for Jason Cleaver. That's all. I'd probably call him the Drum Whisperer. Ah, the Drum Whisperer. <laughs> ah, it's a very good name for him, actually. There we go. No, he actually speaks to the drums. It's kind of weird. Yeah, no, he's, he, for all you guys who don't know, Jason Cleaver is the creator of Casey Drums. He builds drums for a living. He knows, uh, like you say, he's the drum whisperer, right? So come on out tomorrow. See you guys all there. Everybody else, thanks for joining us. I'll see you next week, uh, Monday, for another live lesson. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs>